Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right. All right, so today um, I'm gonna go over the key traders of the week. Um, I got some good trades on, I got some good trades on them this week. So happy about that. Um, I'm gonna be going over the, the market sentiment. Um, I do that every single week and if this is your first webinar, welcome. This is kind of basically what I do every single week. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna actually skip the trader topics and fallacies that I normally do because I'm, I think I'm gonna have to spend most of the time on this, on this topic, just straight up adding to a winner. So, uh, all right, Cody. And then we're gonna end the, the, the session with Q&A. And so if this is your first webinar, the way it works is um, you can throw out a question at any time during a webinar, and if it's pertinent to what I'm talking about, and if I see it, I will try to, to incorporate it into kind of what I'm talking about and try to answer. Workhouse, this is a trade that happened, um, I think on Friday. Yeah, probably on Friday. Uh, but I didn't get to go over it because it was like, and yeah, like after the last webinar, I think. All right, this is just a basic parabolic short trade. I actually haven't done this one in, in a little bit. Um, uh, I haven't done this trade in a little bit, and I actually caught this trade live, but I think, I think Alex, like, I haven't released it just because it's not my typical trade. Um, and so, like, I, I, you know, like, and I already have a couple of videos, like, that still need to come out. And so, like, I might want to release this one as, like, a bonus one later, just, you know, like, on a, during a slow week or something. But I, I, luckily, I got this one on tape because it's kind of fun to get parabolic shorts on tape. But anyway, for, for those who don't, like, you should know this already, but Parabolic shorts, they're more of an advanced trade, right? Um, uh, and normally I only take them, uh, I only take parabolic shorts when it's really overextended on the one minute chart. And this was essentially just an overreaction to news. And this is often what a lot of, like most of the parabolic shorts I do is, is when news immediately comes out or if we're like super going parabolic after like a high day break in the middle of the day when like the, it seems like the last of the shorts being squeezed out. That's also another time, but most of the time it's going to be on like stuff like overreaction to news. And uh, I actually didn't say, like, I just saved this and like, this was right near the end of the day. I, like, I, I saw this trade, I, I took it, took this screenshot and left. So I didn't actually see the rest of the, uh, I know what happened, but I didn't capture the rest of the chart. This ended up like closing at around 320 or something. It, pulled, it went all the way back up. And this is the reason why you short on the front side of the move like this. And you need to have the front side cover because like if this wasn't near the, the end of the day, this could have easily just like kept going, right? Just could have made a secondary push up to 330 just to see like, you know, like, hey, are we going to go higher than this? And this is just a temporary top. So especially when I take parabolic shorts, I am 100% covering on that pullback. There's like, I, I'm never, ever shorting a parabolic hoping to cover the fade in, right, ever. So. Um, Disney was, it's funny, like, so last webinar, like what we talked about was large caps when Brian came on and that was, that was a super fun one. But I talked about how one of my setups in, um, large cap land, um, one of the only reliable ones that I have for me is uh, a continuing, a continuation of the gap. Basically, if a stock gaps up, I think there's a good long opportunity. If it dips and if a stock gaps down, I think. Um, there's a good short opportunity if it pops, right? So this is just, you know, the, you know, the long version, right? This is the gap of continuation, right? It's a setup I outlined in the last webinar. Basically, the way it goes is if it gaps up and dips, you buy for the bounce, right? And the opposite. The, and in this case, you know, this really wasn't a big win because, like, it's hard to size into this kind of trade. I know I, I had one more ad under 37, but I didn't get it. So, you know... That's just, you know, this is more of a partial size or half size trade. Um, 
But because there's no good chart level, all I have to go off of is a whole dollar as a guide or and, and using like an estimation of what I think is possible for the range, right? You know, and this and this just ultimately I can't say any more, but this just comes down to experience. Like, you know, you see charts and, and, and price action all the time and you get a feel for what the range should be on the stock. And you guys all have an idea, right? You don't really expect a stock that's trading from one dollar, you know, to one dollar and fifty cents to go up to four, right? And so you can kind of work your way down and like, well, can it go to 160, 170? Like what would be you know, you kind of estimate the range a little bit. And side note, this is why I don't like cheap stocks because it's so easy to underestimate the range. And I've gone over that before and I'll probably go over it many more times, but uh, TRNX. So this is a trade. I don't know if this one's come out yet. Um, you guys can let me know because sometimes I miss the, the notification, but TRNX, I did a, a video on this. Did that video come out yet? Any, any, any annual or, or lifetime that saw it, like, um, I don't know if this came came out yet, but I did a live trading video on this one. But for those who aren't um, annual, I, okay, so this one should be coming out. Um, and I also, I think he's behind. There's another one that he needs to do. Anyway, um, I don't envy it. Uh, Anyway, so this is a continuation long. And like I always say, normally I suck. Normally I suck with these, right? I just absolutely suck with continuation long. And this is more of a hairy trade, right? He's, or I, like, I, I don't want to say that this is his setup, but continuation trades, like Harry's a lot better at them than me. But nonetheless, my idea for this trade was that 235 was holding, right? So what I did was I basically watched this do its first bounce. And so this is where the first bounce trade ends for me, right? This is where the first bounce trade will end for me, or at least for half of my size. If this is the first bounce buy, I'm getting it, you know, roughly half up here. And I'm, you know, now I'm just seeing if I want to sell like the rest on a pop over, if I'm going to stop out for a heating. So this is where like the first bounce trade would end. Now I didn't get the first bounce on this because I've, I know I was probably looking at something else, but um, I can't remember what I was doing at the time, but I didn't get the first bounce trade on this. Um, but what I was watching was it consolidating here. And what I was hoping to see was that like, I, I was really interested in this pop over, right? This, and you can see the volume. So everyone else was interested, right? Volume's kind of like the key here to let me know like what level is important. Um, and I think I talked about it in the very first um, video I ever did. I really like to see like, when a stock pops over or under a level with volume, it normally means that was a very significant volume because a whole bunch of people were paying attention. So I, I looked to see what's an important level to break, and that was 235. And you, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to pop up here and fail, pop up here and fail. And then when we break over, there's a volume candle. So what I wanted to see was two, you know, if, if what I was now looking for the second this happened was if you know, we were going to hold a higher low and like, I just guessed it would be 230 because that's just the, nat the, the next natural number. Maybe. Uh, and that's why, yes, this was yesterday. Um, so I traded this one, two, three, four times. Um, I, I shorted this in the morning for like a quick little break even scalp, right? I shorted here, added there and like, you know, covered up, like I, I got a, bit, a baby cover and then covered the rest break even. Like uh, not, not a money making trade. Um, but yeah, I, I tried to scalp it short in the morning and like, it just was holding up more than I wanted. And oh man, oh, my, 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 my tags are in the way, but like, it, I, I'm really glad I covered it because it eventually did spike all the way back up to 40 after I got out. And like, I knew like I would have been covering up there. So I'm like, I wanted to get this off break even because it didn't, it didn't immediately like pull off of the, the $7 emotional stuff, kind of like the workhouse trade I just went over. This is where it kind of like pulls kind of immediately after. We, we had a little bit too much uh, consolidation up here for my liking, so I just took it off. Um, where are we? Okay, then I tried to buy it for a reclaim. And I might have been reaching here, but I really liked the volume and the float was like, like a million shares or less. And so like, I, you know, I thought it worth it to give this one a chance. Um, and, it did, and, I, and I lost on it, right? 
uh, what's up, Brian? Um, uh, I, I thought it worth a chance. Um, and like this one just didn't work. And like, I had some slippage here. I, I meant to get out under 40 and, and I just like, you know, like it slipped on me, you know, and that happens sometimes. I had a little bit more slippage than I want. It could have been like, it could have been worse. Like, I mean, I guess it could have gotten like sub five, but I was faster than that. Um, like I had my finger on the button. I just slipped. Well, um, I mean, it'll just work wonders for, for your trading. Yeah, and that's obviously it's easier said than done because there's just the psychology, especially if you're on like a nice streak and you just can't take the loss. Like you refuse to take the loss. That's how it turns into a big loss. So I think like sizing is just a huge part of it. And, and like you said, you know, waiting for that confirmation to add, that's just, that's huge for, for like newer traders or just anyone in general. Yeah. It, it's the thing is, is like, and that's why I had that quote up there. Your account only cares about the trades you take. You might care about the trades you miss, but your account doesn't ever see it. Right. But everyone's afraid that like, you know, like if I lower my risk and I stop out and then it works, like, you know, like that's super, super bad. And it's not good, but it's as long as all of your trades fit within those, like in your game, that's, that's, that's what you need to focus on. Like I'll take a small cut on a, on a trade that even if it works after I'll take that small cut because why? It's not going to, I'm not going to end up with a small cut every time. And that big win is going to cover like three or four small cuts. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe more. Cause if you can get really good at it, like CRC, I was like five cents on that trade. I was going to make like 60 cents on that trade, like 50 cents. Like that's like 12 times. <laughs> is it an offense to eat and drive? <laughs> so, sorry. I, I hope didn't... not. I, I think I, I you cut there. What, what's up? Oh, no, I was reading uh, Pema's comment. He said, is it an offense to eat and drive? Oh, so <laughs> funny. Does anyone have any, like, questions? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I, had a, uh, I had a short on uh, CGC today, um, and, man, I, I covered that so early. I, I shorted at a 16.25. I was in pretty small, but... Um, yeah, I, I took it off at 16 and then I was joking with, uh, Joe and Brian that like, all right, now it's tanking the low of day. Sure enough, this shit went to like 15, 20. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just feel like recently, uh, this week, just, uh, taking things slow. Um, I've been, uh, covering my trades pretty early, but, um, you know, like you said, with adding to the winner, uh, I like sometimes to just take that initial scalp to pay myself. And then this way. If it does pop up, you know, I could re-add uh, a lot of times. What I'll do is like I'll cover half and then I'll re-add more, but then keep that same risk intact. Um, I wanted like 1650 line on it, but I hit 1625 because I was going to scale up to it. So like it was pretty much starter size, but. And bro, that's a recycle. That's a form of adding, right? That's, and that's literally a form of adding. Oh my God, dude. Like, how did I not see this today? Like, this is literally the, the, the gap down continuation <laughs> trade, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You were, um, you uh, mentioned that in the last webinar. Yeah. I, I love this uh, strategy. I've been tracking it a lot and just CGC is just one of those stocks where it's like curling into, it just made a new all time low, just completely dumped into, into uh, all or like yearly low, whatever it was from the, uh, the yearly chart you can see yeah, and um yeah so yearly low and uh just pre-market like it was just getting hammered so i was praying for a pop uh i missed like the initial short i want to say i can't really see some on my phone so i don't remember like the exact levels but i remember after it uh tanked in the morning oh yeah that's better it's yeah, so, like right after it tanked in the morning i wanted 1650 line and then you know i saw 1625 just sort of that push and I started there and then I was going to scale. Uh, my original line was like 17, but I, just, I knew we wouldn't get that. So that's why I was in small because I sort of let the stock come to me. If it didn't hit my line, you know, I'll sort of play that emotion. And um, given that like tank in the open, I was like, you know, these, 
everyone is just going to be pressured to sell the yearly low, that kind of thing. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.